that will soon be the first person to curse on rock and roll radio. Here it comes. Shut that filth up. Oh, we're going to shut them down. They can't close us down. We're pirates. They will find a way. Governments loathe people being free. Um, this is such a great music town that we're in London. So tell me what you remember about your days as a kid. Well, the big thing about pirate radio was you couldn't hear any of the new music. There was a big explosion. It was radical. I'm not particularly nostalgic about that time. It was as good a time as any other, you know what I mean? People make out that it was some kind of... I, I don't like the phenomenon of people of my age saying it was better to be young then than it is now. It wasn't. It was the same as always. But the music, there was some good music, and you couldn't hear it anywhere. Uh, because the government radio didn't play it. There was a period where you knew it was happening, but you couldn't get hold of it until pirate radio came along, and they parked these boats three miles off the coast of England, outside of territorial waters, which made it kind of legal, almost legal, to pump all the new rock and roll into England. And you were devoted to them. And 22 million kids tuned in every day, which is virtually half the people who lived in England, virtually. Uh, so it was a big deal. And we had this weird explosion, uh, where white boys discovered black American music. That's what happened. And they turned it into the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, The Who, and The Faces, and everybody else. You've met quite a few rock stars in your time, haven't you? I've met a few, yeah. I was in, a, I had the, the honor and pleasure of being in the same movie as Keith Richard when I was in Pirates of the Caribbean 3. So I did get to meet uh, the great, uh, one of the greatest guitar players in the world. Uh, I wasn't very, uh, I couldn't think of anything to say much, but I, was, I did shake his hand and I had my picture taken with him, and it was a big day. Did you want, did you befriend him? Can you say that you hung out or? Mm, no, I don't hang out. I, I'm not any good at hanging out. I, you know, I shouldn't really meet anyone. I never know what to say. You know, somebody, uh, you know, it's been, over the years I've been, you know, there's been an opportunity to meet other people and I've always declined because I know that I'll just stand there like a lemon. And, uh, and as for hanging out, it's not gonna happen. I go home and think about it. <laughs> I play the records. Now, could you imagine if, if things today were banned from the radio? Uh, yeah, I can imagine it, but it, 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 it was just that they did, the government didn't, the, it, culturally, it caught them napping. There was such an explosion, and it happened so quickly, and it was also very worrying for them. Because, you know, I mean, it was a big deal if you walked down the street with long hair. You would get arrested. I got pulled by the police routinely, because I had a particular haircut. It's weird now. Also, conversely, we had a festival here which was massive, called the Isle of Wight Festival. Bob Dylan played it one year, and Jimi Hendrix played it the next year. I went to the Jimi Hendrix, and I was playing a part in the theatre which involved me having very short hair. Well, I don't know what happened to love, peace, and understanding, but when I went to the Isle of Wight Festival with short hair, nobody came near me. The crowd would part as I went around. Me and my girlfriend ended up in a big circle with nobody near us because people just were disgusting, disgusted by me. So there was this, you know, it's that kind of fascism. It's that kind of liberal fascism. Wow, that's such an interesting story. What's, uh, what's your next role? My next role, I'm going to play, I'm in, I'm in two movies. One is called Glorious 39, which is a thriller, a suspense murder mystery set in 1939. Uh, and then I'm also in a movie called Wild Target with young Emily Blunt, who I've worked with before in which I play a middle-aged, lonely, girlfriendless assassin who is quite happily killing people until he's asked to kill Emily Blunt and he can't pull the trigger and he doesn't know why because he's never had feelings of that kind. The audience know why, it's because she's too cute uh, and he has to work it out for himself. How cool to play an assassin! Yeah, I get a gun and everything. Have you ever uh, partook in the gun training sort of thing? No, I've never been. You may have noticed there's a, there's a, there's a notable uh, absence of action in my career. I do clever talk and sex, but uh, you know what I mean? But action is... I, I, mind you, I'm a vampire, and occasionally I have to you know, gouge people's eyes out. And sometimes I, I suck the life out of their necks. So, there you, you know, go. You know what I mean? So I've been around. This is a trick. We've got the wrong damn boat! Spectacular mistake.